All right, we are back and cameras are reloaded. Second camera's back in action. Let's do this. Bismillah. So you went back to him. Two months later, you went back to him. And your reasons were, number one, obviously you put everything on yourself. All right. You had that trait where you blame yourself for things that clearly are not your doing. Um, you also, somewhere deep in your head, there was, I'm divorced. He's my only option. I'm not going to get better than him. Things like things of that nature. Um, understandable as well. You even fed that, like plenty. Is it was there any other reason you went back to him? Um, we talked about like giving him a second chance because I thought like we're humans and we make a mistake. What if he uh, could change? Like I was always honestly the person that would always focus on the good that a person does. Wow and uh, give them excuses for the bad. So you were like, man cheated on me? Yeah. I forgive him. Yeah, literally. And you went back to him, and you were able to live with him again, mm -hmm. and completely put that behind behind you both. Yes. You literally didn't bring it up again. You didn't, you weren't like, it didn't like keep kidding, like it didn't bug you anymore. Yeah, no, I didn't, uh, I didn't bring it up again, and um, when uh, one of the ways he got me back was he was like, you know, let's go look at houses. You know, we're going to go look at houses. Let's go look at houses. I promise you we're going to look at houses. And he's like, we're going to, you know, we're going to go, you know, travel. We're going to go traveling. I'm going to take you traveling. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to live our own separate life. You know, I'm going to start praying. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start fasting. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of stuff. Okay. Honestly, just take the story where you want now. So we just got to, is this an accurate dis depiction of the emotional abuse, would you say? So I had um, my, you know, first child and then I got pregnant right away. Okay. And I noticed that when I did, my his treatment towards me was really bad. And he even once uh, told me, he was like, you're stuck. You're stuck in this marriage. You know, um, <clears throat> this what I'm telling you what like what like what he just said happened when I would start just noticing like he would be disrespectful um, putting me down in front of his parents just so they can get a rise out of me um, you know me just asking for like normal wife things um, you know making me feel small trying to like only give me a certain amount of money which was barely nothing um, but yeah he was giving his parents everything why what what made him change that behavior I guess because he thought I would never leave him. So you you have your first child. Mm -hmm. In between that time, were things better? They were a little bit uh, <clears throat> better for a while because, you know, he was really good to put on his act. And then it was like every two weeks he would just want to pick a fight with me. Um, you know, anytime he seen me happy, he would want to put me down. And I just didn't understand these things, honestly. Um, so it was very mentally uh, draining. I started to isolate myself. I was I felt so isolated that I really just was like, maybe if I do what they say, they're gonna love me. Okay. Okay. Cool. You're pregnant again. Mm -hmm. He's treating you horribly. Um, it was just emotional abuse in general. Yeah. Right. There's no limit. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say in regards to it? Emotional abuse. Him, him, how he was towards you, or you think that's it? I think that's it. Um, but you know, when he wanted me to do something and he had an agenda, he would gaslight me. When I did something he didn't want me to do, um, he would, you know, treat me like shit, call me every name in the book, um, wow. make me feel uh, insecure, mm -hmm. make me feel unhappy. Kind of gang, uh, gang. I would get attacked by a whole family. Whole family. It was me versus them. Were y'all still being intimate, or did you cut that off? So anytime he tried to be intimate with me, I would, you know, kind of like hold my own for about like a week or two, and then yeah, I'd give in eventually. Yeah. Would you say it was like that period, meaning it was just horrible and just like the abuse, or were there like highs and lows? Where like there's times where you guys are like really good. And then all of a sudden, boom, a couple of days, it's just a repeated vicious cycle. It was, it was literally just a, a power cycle, a vicious cycle. Every, um, literally every two weeks, you know, him trying to argue with me, him putting me down, 
Um, that's literally what it felt like. Okay. Physical abuse. Yeah, I mean, and then any time he wanted sex, he would tr tr treat me better. And you said that you were physically abused? Yes. You said that you were financially abused? Um, yes. How so? So, um, at the time, I was a stay-at-home mom, and I had no source of income, and he would only give me a certain amount, um, which was nothing to compare mm -hmm. to what I needed, mm -hmm. and uh, he would give his parents everything, which is fine, but at least, you know, take care of your wife. Mm -hmm. So it also made me feel like I, ha I was dependent on him. Mm -hmm. So he controlled me like that. There's so many different aspects to this whole financial nonsense. Yeah, like, it is. You weren't working. Right, he didn't want time. me to, you know. Because it gives you that power. Exactly. You got freedom. He did not want me to be independent. He didn't want you to have your own money. And then there's, you know, like, then there's men who'll be like, go ahead, work, make your own money. But then they take it from you. Or, like, they use it, you know? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, do you want to get into the physical abuse? I mean, yeah, I could definitely um, get into that. So with the physical abuse, at this time I had, you know, I was not pregnant, I had my kids, I had multiple kids, um, and uh, things, as time progressed, things were just getting worse. Uh, the treatment, um, the energy in general, uh, at this point when you have kids, it's a whole nother level. I don't want my children to be around um, yelling, yeah. screaming. I grew up around that, I know how much it affected me, I didn't want them to think it was normal. Um, if I didn't do things, they would take it out on my kids, like not show them love and affection. As a mom, that's the hardest thing to watch. Just take your time. Yeah, let me get you a napkin. I was good until I mentioned kids, bro. <sighs> Hold on, I just need you like a second. That's fine. Take your time. All right, I'm good. Yeah. You know, I remember my uh, one of my kids literally wanting to give my uh, ex-mother-in-law a hug, and she ignored him. You know, yelling at them, putting them down, and it's like I went through that, so oh, yeah. I seen myself getting abused, and I know how badly that affected me. And um, I was in a marriage with multiple kids, and you know, I was thinking to myself like, if I break this family up, they're not going to have a father, so. That was playing with my head. Um, but at the same time, the trauma that my kids experienced, as well as I did. And you know, like, I, it's, I understand. I don't have kids, right? But it's, we go through things go, growing up, and we, we learn to manage it. We learn to surpass it, grow, you know, go through it, and grow out of it, right? We learn from it. And that's great and all, but it doesn't mean that you have to learn those lessons that way. And you def I'm, I'm, I'm sure like if I had children, I definitely, obviously don't want my kids to learn the same lessons that I've learned. I want them to have the lessons, but I don't want, want them to learn them the way I learned them, you know? Or you, you don't want your kids to learn those hard lessons through the same means which you learned them through. So I, I just that's absurd and, and you just lived with them through all of this were his parents ever physical to, with your kids <sighs> not really okay to what extent would he be physical with you so then there was a moment uh for the first time ever yeah uh so this is like towards the, the middle of my marriage yeah where he got physical with me um and before that he has pushed me around before you know Yep. in arguments um but this is where he got which is physical and which is not right at all but this time it was really bad so the first time he laid his hands on me um you know we were arguing and he basically took me and like body slammed me on the bed 
and you know him and I were going back and forth and in my mind I was so shocked and felt even more betrayed because he has you know abused me before but not physically and uh, he was a lot bigger than me so I was also scared but I f was fighting back and you know you didn't just take it I didn't just take it I fought back I said the most I could do is just fight I'm fighting for myself yeah he definitely um, bashed my head into the wall a couple of times he body slammed me he tried to choke me out but I was just you know fighting as hard as I could and then his parents came up and you know they heard the <coughs> noise and uh, the first thing that my mother-in-law says was why is my son's neck red and that literally made me go crazy. I felt like I was nothing. I felt like I was, like, I was just shocked. I was like, wow. I felt like I had nobody. Why is my son's neck red? Was there nothing wrong with you? Like, um, yeah. I definitely, my face was swollen. Um, he was punching me a lot in the stomach. So it didn't show right away, but, you know, I was trying to get him off of me. So that's why, like, okay. his neck was red. Like, I was trying to push him off of me. After the physical abuse, it really, um, really hurt me. And, like, I knew I needed to leave, but I just needed to know how. And I just needed the strength to get out. All right. So now we know what you went through at a very minimal extent. Okay. Um... We obviously can't talk about everything that you went through, but <clears throat> every aspect of your life was affected in some way, shape, or form, whether it was your psyche, whether it was your mentality, whether it was your emotional standing, whether it was your physical standing as well, whether it was your children's emotional um, uh, experience, right? Every thing that was you and had to do with you was affected in some way shape or form and what at what point were you like I'm ready to get out of this so at that point like obviously I knew that was a horrible red flag and uh, I didn't uh, talk to him for a while I didn't wasn't intimate from for uh, with him for a while. So then that's when he started acting all like, you know, I love you. You know, I'm sorry. I'll never do that again. And of course, that played with my mind. Um, and um, I was like, let me just focus on his actions and see if he really is a change, like is starting to change. And he was starting a little bit, but shortly after back to the same old ways did you get counseling at any point i tried to get him you. to go to counseling with mm -hmm. me but he wouldn't i tried to hit him with the dean so bad it's the ego as well yeah gotta know how to work around that all right so when were you when were you like it's time to get out how did you go about it is the question i went about it when uh so like I said, I'm, you know, I'm Palestinian, and uh, so my family members used to send me money, and I would always, you know, save it okay. for my future, for my kids' future. Like, cool. you know, I want them, like, you know, to, like, at least be set so when they go to college, like, yep. you know. And um, I noticed, and that was, like, a chunk of money over six, seven years. All right. And um, he took that from me. Okay. And um, he, his treatment Whoa. towards me was just getting worse uh, because he noticed me starting to stand up for myself because after a while, it got so bad and so miserable mm, that, like that I was like, I can't do this. And I have to stand up for myself. And if he's not going to change, I'm out. I tried every route I could. Yeah. I was still respectful yep. uh, to him and his family. I, you know, gave him chances. Yep. I tried everything I could, but nothing was changing. So I think he knew that I was leaving. Mm. He took all my jewelry. Mm. He took the money that I saved up. Yep. Wow. Then I went to my friend's house, um, and I prayed Salat al-Istikhara. Okay. The next day, I, I asked Allah, Allah at the time uh, if this 
person is not what's best for me. Please get me out of this marriage and please, um, you know, allow it to be, you know, give me the strength to get me out of this marriage. So I went to my friend's house. Um, I prayed istikhara. Um, I, he thought I was just going to chill. Chill. So um, he uh, he thought I was just going there to chill, but I ended up staying the night. And um, he wanted to know why, and I just said, I have to think about things. Like, mm. you're not changing. This is just getting worse. Yeah. Uh, so then I prayed to Sahara. Um, I go back to the house because I n- knew this was it. Yep. They, him and his mom ransacked my all my room, I guess looking for more valuables or whatnot. It was just the craziest thing. And when I seen that, I'm just like, what kind of people are the are they um so then um i just have to okay he had any respect for me and you just as time progressed like yeah the process went forward with you you guys actually separating and whatnot and in 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 the marriage within the seven years apart from the first time you went back to him were there other times where stuff happened you left and then came back again uh just that one time okay you've told us your childhood how it stems how your marriages relate to your childhood you told us what you went through in your marriages we've gone through it i don't know what else we could say about it besides I'm sorry you had to go through that. Um, I'm happy that you are in a better place than you were. Um, those things that you went through aren't a part of your life anymore, alhamdulillah, right? And you've grown from it. So, one question I do have. One divorce came up this time around. You can laugh. Because, <laughs> bro, I'm like, it was horrible. Can, um, when divorce came up around this time, yeah, what did your parents have to say about it? They gave me hell. Imagine. My first marriage, they gave me hell. Whoa. They, but. Um, they gave me hell. What's the logic behind it? They gave me hell, but they, they I know they felt bad, right? Sure. But they still gave me hell because they were afraid of what... Who's going to marry you? Mm-hmm. And what the people in the village is going to say. Who's going to marry you? What are they going to say? I'm like, just put your trust in Allah and we're fine. Yeah, who's telling the yeah. village, by the way? Like, like no, <laughs> literally. Like, that's how they talk. Like, what are they going to say? Oh, my God, what am I going to tell people? Like, what is going on here? Yeah, I, and uh, okay. What about other people in your family? What they have to say about it? Bro, I had an aunt that was like, I told her that I was going to divorce and, she, yeah. and told her, like, you know some of the reasons because I, st- I still kept my previous marriage yeah. private the issues that we had I kept it private between uh, my ex-husband and I yeah. um, sometimes my parents knew a little bit but I didn't expose anybody okay you know uh, but my aunt she was like just to let you know if you divorce you're gonna have a 0.5 chance of getting remarried so I want you to think about it before you divorce. Wait, where'd she get that statistic? Like, where'd you get that statistic, my guy? Like, to be honest, I I, I laughed about it because I'm just like, man. Mm. But it did like, uh, it did f- with me a little bit. Okay. And it, the reason why it messed with me is because I just was shocked at like how I couldn't have her support. How many years has it been since the separation now? Um, it's been about two years. For yourself, where do you stand? mentally when it comes to just everything you as a person uh how you're looked at as a divorced woman um all these things like where are you for yourself for myself i've never been more mentally stronger i you know got out of toxic situations that Mm -hmm. brought me so down i didn't think i could ever be this happy or this strong um and the fact that i am i'm blessed that I went through what I went through because it made me grow as a person and I didn't allow these experiences to affect the way I love um, I still believe that one day inshallah um, I'm gonna 
be with a person that's going to love me for who I am, make me a better person because I feel like a marriage, you know, you bring the best out of that person. Yeah. What would you like to say to everyone listening? What would you like to end this off with, leave us off with, you know, I'm sure some of us, uh, a lot of us are going through the same thing. And if we're not going from this, uh, going through this, we can definitely learn a lot from this entire episode. So what would you like to say to those who are going through this right now? I would like to tell them, like, honestly, when you feel like there's no hope and when you feel like there's nobody to turn to and when you are disrespected um, constantly, 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 and you start hating yourself and you start, uh, you know, not wanting to want to live, there is hope for you. You have to love yourself. You have to believe in yourself. Um, you have to want what's best for yourself to truly grow as a person. And um, with the power, with you know, Allah's will, when you believe in yourself, you can anything can happen. You can take yourself out of any situation. You have to just find the strength and know what's that. What would be best for you is no negativity, no disrespect. Um, what would you say to those people? whose parents are trying to force them into a marriage. Because this this isn't just common with women. This hap- It actually happens to men as well. And um, as much as this entire conversation is ignored, it's equally ignored for, for guys as well. I think that's an entirely different discussion. But there are people right now listening who are being forced into marriage with somebody. We've established that it is against the religion. And we've also established that to some parents, they that just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter that it's haram, you know. Uh, to some parents, the culture takes precedence, and it is above what the religion says. Like you can tell some parents and be like, as a child, you can tell your parent and be like, you know, what you're doing is haram, and they won't care. So, what would you say to someone who's in this situation? I would say, uh, I would tell them that they deserve to be with who they want to be um and uh to like hold on i have to be very careful because i'm not i don't want them to disrespect their parents but you know just to i would tell them to just fight for what what you believe in like what's best for yourself um everybody deserves to be with the person they want to be with a miserable marriage it's like walking into a museum You know, do you want to see negativity every day or do you want to see, you know, colorful vibes and, 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 you know, you know, uplifting, um, you know, happiness, true love. Like, I would think that it's a situation for someone like being in an arranged marriage is one of the worst things you could do to yourself. And I would tell them to not go for it. You mean forced? Yes. So, okay, I'm going to end it with this. There's a very fine line. You said you don't want them to respect, disrespect the parents, right? I 100% agree, right? Parents also have to recognize that they have rights towards their kids. It's not just, oh, you're my son, you're my daughter. You have, to, you always have to listen to me. You always have to obey me. And I, and like, you know, you always have to respect me. But I, as a parent, I don't have to do diddly squat to, to towards you. You know, I can treat you however I want. I can be with you however I want, et cetera, et cetera. That is not the case. And parents need to understand that as well, right? Because this is a great example to, of how extreme that mindset can carry someone. You know, parents will end up literally taking rights that were given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala away from you. You know, so true. and it's not from the religion. It's from the ignorance that is within all of us. Um, but that's also what happens when you um, when you put culture over religion. Islam beautifies culture, if anything, right? But it can't be the other way around, ever, right? So, us putting us us putting ourselves in these situations, I will say, be upfront with your parents, be strong. You know, if not for yourself for the sake of them and the wrong that they are falling into stand up for yourself 
own up to the right that Allah has given you. Don't let them fall into a position for the sake of Allah where Allah holds them accountable like I gave them this right. Like on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Don't let them be asked by Allah. I gave you this right. Um, or sorry, I gave your son or daughter this right. Who are you to take it away? You don't want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask your parents that on the day of judgment. So be strong, if not for yourself, for them. All right? And tell them in the most beautiful of ways. You know, just be like, Mom, Dad, you know, I love you. I've always obeyed you. I've always respected you. I've always listened to you. Your pleasure has always been my priority. Don't you try, like, you know, you raised me beautifully. Really hype them up. Don't you think that because of how you've raised me, I could make a good decision for who I want in my life? You know, don't you trust me? Don't you believe in me like that? Right? Don't you, and even if, even if you don't want me, someone that you bring forth, don't you trust me to make a decision? Have a grown-up discussion with them because a lot of the times it's simply we are not treated as adults. If you're getting married, fam, you're an adult. All right. Whether you're ready or not, I know the culture just pushes you into it sometimes, even if you're not ready for it, right? Age has nothing to do with it, but sometimes you're just not ready, all right? And you get pushed into it. But have that mature, grown up adult conversation with them and let them treat you like an adult. Don't let them cross that line. Understand that when it comes to the rights Allah has given you, sadly, they come second. Because when things go south, we can't even blame them at the end of the day. Because sure, maybe they were the means, but at the end of the day, we didn't hold ourself, ourselves accountable to the right that Allah gave us, right? We didn't stand up for it. We didn't stand up for ourselves. And sometimes you have to go to, through very lengthy extents. I will never understand this. I will never understand what people who go through this go through. Because I don't, I didn't have to go through that. My parents never have, you know, whatever issues I may have with my my family, my parents. I, alhamdulillah, don't have the obstacle or didn't have the obstacle of, you know, you have to marry this person or they have to be from this place and this culture. Like, they have to be this age. Like, I didn't have to deal with those things. So I will never understand. But there's one thing that I do understand, and that is you can't blame anyone Sorry, you can't blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we allow an injustice to happen to ourselves. Because at the end of the day, Allah wanted the best for you. Allah gave you, Allah gave you that right, right? And He will never let a wrong happen to us. He tells us that. He's the most just. He is the most just. And sometimes when we commit injustices to ourselves, whether it's through sinning, whether it's through this, whether it's through something else, right? He will get us out of it. He got you out of it. He's been there for you more more times than you can exactly. more than times than you can ever count, right? Exactly. And I'm sure it strengthened your relationship with him to where you probably don't even flake towards him now. You know, you're just like, you know, maybe you're presented with an opportunity of like to send your probably like, nah man, I can't do that. I'm displeasing a lot. Like he did so much for me. How can I do this? Exactly. This is this is my motivational tidbit, all right? If you want your life to go a certain way, obviously hold up to Allah's power and ta'ala, right? Obviously respect your parents, but understand Allah comes before them. Don't let your fear of disrespecting your parents maintain that fine line, but don't let that fear make you end up disrespecting that which Allah has given you. And in this case, it would be that right, right? So, like she said, know what you want if you don't want something stand up for it that is your right and nobody can take that away from you if Allah gave it to you nobody can take it away from you you can let you can allow them to take it away from you but at that at that at that point it's on you it's not on Allah but in, I, this is and this is just how Allah, how Allah works if you fall into that he will get you out of it if you're in it now he will get you out of it and if you've already fell into it He's going to get you out of it. Trust Him. Put your faith in Him. Be strong. And don't let yourself change because of what other someone else has put you through. Um, stay true to yourself. And I think that's it. I just went on this rant. Did, did I say anything incorrect?
that you disagreed with or not at all have you not seen me nodding this whole time everything okay. you said was spot on alhamdulillah okay and um is there anything else you want to add just um uh, please yourself please allah and you know do what's best for you yep and i wanted to thank you for allowing me to share my story and i really hope that it gives um people strength absolutely no i i thank you for coming forth and reaching out to me and saying hey I, like i saw you she literally reached out to me she was like i saw your podcast you're tackling some like ser i only have like three episodes out this is, she's the fourth one and um she was like you're you know you're tackling some issues i would love to tell my story um and then we spoke about it and i was like look i want this i want you to go all out and we'll keep you anonymous i'm I, literally people don't know where i am people don't know who i'm talking to i haven't shown you on the camera it's just the back of your head and your voice is altered so i pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you for your bravery and i pray that he increases you and i pray that he um eases all your affairs pray that he increases you in this life and the next more than you could possibly imagine makes you more successful than you can possibly imagine and makes this uh what you just did a source of you really um attaining his shade his love his pleasure on the day of judgment and i pray that he makes you from those people who he loves the most in this life and the next i mean i mean um don't tap the mic <laughs> you're good um with that being said um that's it for episode four i haven't decided if i'm releasing this in two parts because this is a long podcast but um most likely two parts if uh if i don't release this in one part with that being said, y'all make du'a for your sister. Make du'a for those who are going through the same thing. Remember people in your prayers. If you know somebody who is going through this, you go out of your way and stick up for them. Right triumphs wrong always, regardless of who it is who it is against. And we need to instill that within ourselves. So if you know somebody who's going through this, be there for them. Stick up for them. Be a means of strength for them and a source of strength for them. Do not let them fall into a life that you wouldn't want for yourself, all right? Imagine if somebody literally said to you, yeah, you got to marry this person. You can't marry anybody else. Sorry. You would not You would not deal with that. I wouldn't deal with that. So if you know somebody who's going through this, stick up for them. Be there for them. And that's all I'm going to say. I've said too much. Y'all take it easy. Um, don't forget to smile as always. And stay humble. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi. Well, but I got to peace.